A concurrent model is one in which instruction is accessible by students in school and at home at the same time. It's important that both groups of students are part of the classroom experience, regardless of where they are physically. Here's a class set up for concurrent instruction. Notice how students are wearing masks responsibly and are seated six feet apart with a set of individual materials nearby, following the FCPS and CDC approved guidelines for safe social distancing. The teacher is engaging both groups of students with a regular practice that she would use if all students were in school face to face. She asks questions to a whole group, then provides time for students to think before asking them to share. She did have to make some changes ahead of time though. The teacher uses her laptop as part of her facilitation station and projects in the back of the room to show students interacting at home. This large visual cue helps to bring the two groups together and encourages everyone to feel like an active member of the classroom community. This setup is different from a usual classroom setup and took time and resources to prepare. Let's take a closer look at how the teacher intentionally encourages participation from students at home and in person. Uh, from home, let me get uh, Pierre and uh, Evan, and then in the classroom, let me get Audrey and Reed. We need to make 37. She has made a deliberate choice to invite responses from both groups so that all learners are individually engaged and can hear from their classmates, regardless of their location. This small shift in her facilitation language helps to keep the entire class connected. Let's take a look at similar practices at a high school. The students responsibly wear masks and are seated six feet apart, following the FCPS and CDC approved guidelines for safe social distancing. The teacher is engaging both groups of students. He uses technology to make the instruction clear and visible to the students learning at home, while the students in school follow along with his in-person modeling. Teachers are also determining creative ways to check in with students as a large group, in small groups, and one-on-one. -on -one. Here's an example of a teacher checking in with individual students to monitor progress and give one-on-one -on -one support. Notice the masks and plexiglass screen. Look closer at the back of the room. In-school students, who are six feet apart, and at-home students are learning through other activities, such as engaging with independent choice boards full of accessible resources about their current unit. These options can be supported through technology or through other materials. Using this kind of workshop model provides the teacher with time to check in and conference, meeting the needs of students individually while others build new knowledge and apply their learning. While you are seeing a face-to-face -face meeting here, the teacher could also do this with a student at home in a breakout room. This is one way a teacher can meet the individual and group needs of students during concurrent instruction. The transition to concurrent instruction is a shift from what teachers have been doing for years.